and we are live. Welcome to another session of Building the Bull. This session is brought to you by the Sky Labs and Vetter Ecosystem. My name is Ryan, and I am so glad to be your host today. As you're hopping on board, go ahead and drop a high hello. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. We do have a worldwide audience, and uh, it's always great to see where everybody is from. Uh, right now, we got uh, Nigeria's in the house. We have Canada's in the house. And uh, like I said, the worldwide audience. So, so glad that you're here today. This is an interactive session, so... If you have any questions, be sure to ask your questions, but also follow along. If I put out a question, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section so we can all get together and uh, learn from each other. <clears throat> Last year, 16,000 crypto projects launched. How would you like to get paid to share quality crypto pre sales on our CrowdX calendar? That's exactly what these sessions are all about. It's designed to equip you with the knowledge and resources and experience to support you in finding great projects. As a community, as an ecosystem, we work together utilizing something called crowdsourcing uh, to help people find projects that have potential at the same time bring up warnings and red flags about projects that may bring concern. For the last 12 months, that's one entire year, for the last year, every single week, we have recorded combined over 120 plus live sessions just like this where we support our community in navigating the CrowdX calendar finding 2x to 100x crypto gems and like i said earlier paying out thousands of dollars worth of cryptocurrency in the process to our community members just by participating i'm going to show you how simple it is to post projects to the calendar but again we do two sessions a week we on tuesdays and thursdays this is the thursday session you're in the right place at the right time and as the the, the title of the video we're going to be talking about sellers getting wrecked you may have heard that phrase before. You may have heard that phrase before. If you've heard that phrase, if you've been in Telegram, if you've been in Discord, if you've been on YouTube, if you've ever heard someone say that phrase, sellers get wrecked, go ahead and type yes in the comment section so I know that I'm not the only one who sees that. Now, as you guys are typing yes, I do want to give a shout out and uh, congratulations. Uh, we'd have a couple projects that we talked about the last couple uh, sessions that, uh, that ended up having a successful successful launch first project is uh, matrix gpt they ended up having a successful profitable launch this is the fair launch price okay we talked about this one on the session i believe it was last week and uh so this would be the uh the, the pre-sale price right here and so what we use right here is a tool called a date range and we're going to drag this over from the first day the first uh candle there that's five minutes and we're going to pull it over till it reaches a day right here we are at one day this is the first 24 hours okay we score projects based on the first 24 hours the best set first seven days and the first uh, 30 days okay and those that's the criteria that we determine whether a project has been profitable okay it's profitable within the first 24 hours the first seven days the first 30 days okay so for this project right here um, it launched like i said here's a pre-sale price and uh, it was a 2.2x, 2.2x for the all-time high. Now, all-time high, everyone is familiar with what all-time high is, the ATH. That's what all the projects brag and boast about, and they celebrate, oh, our all-time high. <laughs> but how long was it there? <laughs> was it there for a minute, a second, a day, what, what have you? And so in the better ecosystem, one of the things that we're doing to tr change the space and create new standards is we introduce something called the VAL, Vetter Audited Highest Low, V-A-H-L, Vetter Audited Highest Low. And what that indicates is this is the, the, the highest low, okay, where price was above this particular area for at least one hour in the 24-hour time frame. All right, so what would we do? We would just check a line here and we're going to count 13 candles. Okay, so we see like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so we can move it up a little bit further. Okay, it's going to be somewhere right around here. Okay, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Here we go, right around here. Okay, this puts us right at a 1.8x. Okay, 1.8x. And so we would say that this, this project had a vowel of a 1.8x. 
Okay, so the all-time high was whatever I said a minute ago. I forgot. <laughs> but the vows at 1.8. And why is this significant? Why is this important? Well, if you've ever been in a pre-sell and you're struggling to find the contract, you're struggling on pancake swap to try to swap it out, you're asking what slippage is, oh, what's the tax, oh, this, oh, that, you're getting an error, you're trying to pump it through. What we're saying is you had an entire hour to be able to swap out between a 1.8x and the, the high was right there, 2.2x. So in between 1.8x and a 2.2x, you had an entire hour to swap out. That's awesome. That means you had plenty of time, even if you forgot, maybe you were late, you know, maybe you're late to the party, you forgot that the launch even happened. There was adequate time for you to be able to swap out and profit between a 1.8x and a 2.2x. So congratulations, remain strong. Congratulations, Luis. Now, Luis, I never know which, which name to use. <laughs> I never know. I never know if I should use your your, your first name because that's what it is here here on YouTube, or if I should use your your platform name. But either way, congratulations on that. And again, this is a project we talked about last week. We talked about the pros and cons. We talked about the positives and the red flags. And this is one of the benefits of plugging in to the community and plugging into these live sessions to be able to see and have uh, your uh, your your feelers out there uh, to see what kind of projects are coming down the pipe. So let's look at the next project. The next project was uh, Le uh, Luix. I think I was saying it Luix last week, but now, now I see that it's L-I-U-X. I was saying Luix, but Leux. I don't know. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so this was actually posted by Hellstrom. And one of the things that we discovered about this project is they had a previous project that um, they had launched earlier in January, did pretty good, okay, and my, my only concern with this project was just unsure, um, just unsure if, uh, you know, why the team was going to create something so quickly, you know, that was one of the, the things, that was one of the red flags that we talked about with this project, uh, but they did launch, and um, so let's go ahead and take a look to see how they did, all-time high, sitting at a 1.6x for the all-time high, and then we're going to count uh, candles. Remember, we're going to count candles. Right here, we can count. Uh, right here, there's a chunk. There's 50 minutes right there. So we're looking at right around for the vowel. If this is 50 minutes right here, right about there. Okay. So we're looking at about 20, maybe, yeah, we're looking at right 20, 20%. Okay. So the vowel for this project is a 1.2x. The all-time high is 1.6x. And this is a project we looked at on Tuesday, I believe. No, I don't know. I tell you what, guys, we look at so many projects, it's really hard for me to keep track <laughs> of what days are what. Um, I know that we, we looked at a uh, we looked at a really high, high intensity, high scale, um, big vision project on Tuesday. I don't know if we looked at this project in addition to that or not. This may have been last week. Either way, another project that we talked about, another project found on the CrowdX calendar, and another project that's profitable in the 24-hour time frame. So congratulations to Hellstrom. Good job on uh, finding this project. And uh, again, congratulations to Luis uh, for finding great projects as well. Now, the reason I want to talk about this idea and concept of um, sellers getting wrecked, let's just go ahead and pull up this image here. <laughs> sellers get wrecked. The reason I wanted to talk about this, and I see other people in the chat who say, you know, yes, yes, yes. Hey, I'll, glad you're here. I see these people saying yes, that they, they've heard this term before. One of the things that frustrates me about this term is what is the reason and purpose behind it? What is the reason and purpose behind it? And I want you to think about this. It's one thing to say this when price has done something significant. It's one thing to say this when a project is down 60% and then it turns around and goes up 2x, 4x, 8x, 10x, 20x. It's one thing to say that sellers get wrecked after the fact. 
after the fact. It's one thing to say that. I believe it's something entirely different when you say that during the launch. I almost believe that, that this idea, I've, I've said this before, the crypto space is full of shady people. And there's also good people. But there's a lot of shady people in the crypto space. And you got to understand, if they're saying this at launch, why are they saying this? Are they saying this with the hopes that you feel guilty about swapping, about selling? Are they saying this with the hopes that, oh, sellers get wrecked, that it creates a, f a FOMO inside of fear of missing out, which means it keeps you in a position that maybe you shouldn't be in? I just, I want to plant this seed because I was doing some, some, some sleuthing. I was doing some internet sleuthing and I found some really interesting things with a handful of different wallets. And this is just one project. This is just a couple wallets. I mean, there's, there's thousands, hundreds and thousands of different variables and things going on behind the scenes that we know nothing of. Okay. So I, I, I know that, but hear me out on this. I've seen some things that just don't make sense, okay? You know, I'm, I'm definitely not a detective. I'm, I'm definitely not like CoffeeZilla, the internet crypto detective. But I do like digging into some things. I do like trying to connect the dots. I do like trying to figure out what the motives are. Why would this happen? How could this happen? What's the benefit of this happening? And when I see a pattern happen over and over again, it just makes me think like, this person just can't be stupid. I mean, I guess they can be stupid. <laughs> But it just makes me wonder, is something else going on behind the scenes? And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily have the ability to uncover everything, um, nor do I have the knowledge necessarily, and even the interest. But maybe a group of people could maybe potentially work together to uncover some of these things. But I, I found just a paper trail, if you will. Of, of, of a handful of transactions that just quite frankly don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Okay? And um, so there's, there's two things that I want to point out. And I want to point out this one concept first. So let me just go ahead. Let me, let me, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Here we go. Let me close this out. Okay? And let me open up, let me, let me pull this over here. Okay? I want to open up this and let me zoom in. Uh, zoom, 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 zoom. There we go. Okay. Hopefully you can see that good. There, that you can see that great. Okay, you can see this great. All right. So here is here are some transactions. Okay, here are some transactions uh, with a particular wallet, just a a, a wallet, n n you know, just a random wallet. Um, I, I saw another influencer that had talked about this, this idea, then it led me down this rabbit hole. And tell you the truth, I don't know how I stumbled across this wallet, but what I found was an absolute gold mine. <laughs> and, and, either, and either this person is stupid and ignorant and has absolutely no clue what they're doing, or there's a method to their madness. Okay, there's a method to their madness. This particular person participated in a project called Launchverse, they contributed $557. Launch first launched at 12 o'clock, and this person sold at 535 with a loss of $244. They sold at a loss. Okay, you know, maybe they're just cutting their losses, moving on to the next one. I don't have anything. I don't have a problem with that. No big deal. Okay. Hey, Meng. Hey, Phyllis. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Okay, they, so they sold at a loss. All right. <clears throat> Bravo Arena. They contributed $551. Project launches at 10 o'clock. They sell 58 seconds later. Now, we don't know exactly what time this launch was. All, you know, we can't tell, um, you know, we, we can't tell the seconds. You know, the minute is as low as we can go. So, did they sell instantly? I have no idea. I don't know. But that's pretty quick. <laughs> that's pretty quick. Okay. So, project launches at 10. They sell at 10 in 58 seconds. Okay, and put in five hundred fifty-one dollars. They made a profit of forty-two. 
Next project, Neural AI. We talked about this one on the call a few weeks back. Put in $554. Project launches at 9. At 9.01.27, they sold for a loss of $9. Multidex, $772 put in. Launches at 9 o'clock. They sold 40 seconds right at launch. They lost $15. Wallet Seifu put in $1,699, launches at 8 o'clock, sold at a minute 23 seconds later, loss of $10. Kingsy Cash, looks like it was a, uh, they had some problems, they probably would have sold. <laughs> knowing knowing their history, they would have sold, but uh, they only put $6.75 in this one, which I, that, that in and of itself was kind of strange. That's kind of strange. Um, so that one's a kind of a wash. Central AI put in 975. It launched at 7. They sold literally 38 seconds after 7 o'clock. They lost $21. AI Floki put in $1,235. Launches at 901. They sold at 901.23. 23 seconds into launch. They sold. They sold. They lost $117. Now, when I look at this, my thought is like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> I mean, what is he doing? Like, what is going on? Like, seriously, what what in the world is happening here? Like, literally, as soon as the pro not not this one, with exception, this one is the only exception, because it's a clear five minutes later. Okay, these others, we don't know the actual second timestamps. So it could be much quicker than that. This one we know is five minutes later. The first one. Okay, the first one. So, you know, maybe he got burned on launch first and was like, man, I got to get out of this ASAP. And his strategy is like, okay, I want to get in. And I hope that as I'm selling instantly, other people are buying instantly. I, I don't know. You know, I, I, like I said, as, a, as an internet detective, a crypto detective, I don't know what their motives are. I don't know what's going through his mind. I, to me, if this is a normal user um, and, and they're trying to figure out this, they're doing a horrible job, all right? Their process doesn't work. You hear me talk about KSP, Knowledge of System Performance. Um, their KSP, this is garbage. This, this should tell them right away, this strategy sucks. <laughs> like, this is horrible. They don't know what they're doing, okay? But, but then part of me is like, well, can someone really be that ignorant, can someone really keep coming back and sell instantly, hoping the price is going to pump the moment that they're selling? Is that is that is that real? Is that a possibility? Because the thing is, they're they're not even given time for this to actually move. Okay, there's just there's just no time. So let's let's take a look to see what the, what the chart actually says on some of these. Go back down here to. All right, so, so for this project, this one is um, Launchverse. Launchverse just tanked right away. Okay, so five minutes in, he's like, forget it. <laughs> I'm out. All right, so Launchverse tanked right away. He's out of there. All right, so let's close that. Okay, Bravo Arena. Let's take a look at old Bravo Arena here. Okay, so there's, there is the, uh, right there is the, the pre-sale price, launch price, whatever. Okay, as soon as it launches, it tanks. Okay, let's look at uh, Neural AI. So we've talked about this one a couple of times. Close that right there. Neural AI, it's up the first minute and drops off, and then it starts picking up. And later on down the road, it just kind of falls off a bit and then comes back up uh, within the second day. Okay. But again, there's, there's, there's struggling. Okay. There, there, there's, there's a struggle here. Okay. This one actually went up a little bit and then went down. All right. So, like, we have 2.4K volume within the first minute. The next minute, we have 51K volume down okay then we have 
33k up 30k up so I, I'm looking at the volume right here for each candle all right so at launch there was a dump and then there was you know some some pumping happened here this is uh, multi-dex close delete all this stuff right here multi-dex same thing uh, multi-dex was a little bit weird uh, based on the way the price was but you know the first candle is down people are selling right away people are selling wallet seifu right away there's a dump Now this one was the uh, the asterisk. <laughs> this is our our boy here, King Cash Z or King Z Cash, whatever. Um, I find that really questionable his activity. Uh, next we have Central AI. Now you may be thinking like, well, Ryan, where where are you going with this? What I'm saying is, every one of these projects dumped at launch, and only one of them came back. I mean, like, really came back. When I say really, I mean, like, neural AI is the only one that actually came back significantly. They actually had gains where people could be proud of. You know, nothing nothing crazy. Not crazy gains, but, like, you know, that's 2.8x for the all-time high. I'm, you know, probably sitting around 2x for, you know, within, that, within the seven-day window. What, what am I getting at this? Where am I going? What, what, what is my, my thought process on this? So we have two options. We have option one that this person is an idiot. Okay, that this person's an idiot, has a horrible strategy. The strategy is to get in a fair launch. All these are fair launches, by the way. Get in a fair launch. I'm pretty sure all these are fair launches. Let me, let me before, I, before I say that, let me, let me confirm. Let me confirm. Fair launch, fair launch. Fair launch, fair launch, fair launch, fair launch, fair launch. Okay, yeah. so all, all these are fair launches, and their strategy is as soon as the project launches, I'm selling. Their strategy so far has lost them $361. Okay. They've only won one project, which is forty-two dollars. Bravo just happened to, you know, when they when they sold, it just happened to be up when they sold. It was up here somehow when they sold. <laughs> they got lucky, but all their projects have been at a loss. Okay, and so my thought first thought process is I feel bad for the person. This is an idiot. They don't know what they're doing. They're misinformed. That maybe they're in some kind of Telegram group that teaches people. That this is how you make money at fair launches. As soon as it goes live, you just dump it. And that's how you make money in fair launches. Just trying to get lucky. Just trying to get lucky on, maybe we're going to get a quick little pump. Okay, maybe we're going to you know do some stuff. That was my, thirst, my first thought process. But then I started thinking like, okay, what's their true intent? What, what could be their intent? Is, is there another opportunity? Is there another, another possibility here? And again, this is all subjective. All right, you may look at me and say, that's so mean of you to say that this guy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. <laughs> okay, but at the same time, you know, you may be saying, Ryan, is this the moment where you put your tenfold hat on? It might be. Brace yourselves. Here goes. Is it possible that people may want the project to dump to get better entries? Is it possible that this is not necessarily a real person getting in these projects, but rather a seat on the bus to show hype and show interest in a project? And the whole reason that they're there is to create this dip so then anyone who buys lower can make more money. There's zero tax, things like that. Is it possible? Is it possible? I think it is. I mean, look at some of the stuff we've seen. Okay? People who bought the dip down here, they're sitting at a 7x. All right? 
Is it possible that these pumps could be orchestrated? Is it possible that these dumps could be orchestrated? I think it could be. And I don't think it's too far-fetched. Okay, is it possible to create this kind of like scarcity? Like, oh man, you know, people get out of there. No, oh, let's sell, hurry, you know? Like to create these moves for other people. Is it possible that this particular user could have one wallet that serves one purpose and another wallet that serves another purpose. One wallet sells right away to create selling pressure and another wallet buys a dips to write it up. Why not? Now you, you may be thinking, well, Ryan, that sure is a lot of work. Yeah, it, it is a lot of work, but like when you see some of the stuff that, I mean, this, is, this just doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, if, like it, this is this is just this is not a strategy. I mean, I guess it's possible this is a strategy, but like, how how many times is this gonna? He's just this is just this is a losing strategy. It just doesn't work, okay? And so when we look at these, when we look at all these dips that happen. It just makes me skeptical. It makes me really skeptical. I mean, look at look at this right out the gate. AI Floki, which by the way, you want to talk about a shady project? Um, it's not coincidental that these uh, thumbnails look identical. I say identical, I mean like the structure. These are very similar. Okay, it's not it's not a coincidence. Uh, number two, um, this Telegram group was created on the the the, the twentieth. Okay, in two days they filled that Telegram group. Okay, in in two days. In two days, they filled the group with 4,500 members. They filled the pre-sell. You know, they raised 147 BNB. Like, you know, this is all the fluff and nonsense we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Okay? I don't think it's a far stretch to say that there are some wallets with the intent to sell, to create buying opportunities for other people or limit the risk. So instead of risking, you know, $500 on this one account, you know, it's a it's a large enough chunk to where people see a, a large cell come in. It can create a domino effect of other cells, and then they can buy in at a lower price, risk less, and if they know about other opportunities to pump, I think there's an opportunity to make money there. Again, you can say that you know I'm I'm out there, I'm I'm way out in left field, and, and I got my ten foil hat on, and that's fine, and you may be right. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might be right and I'm okay with that I'm okay with being wrong I'm okay with sounding silly that's all right with me and then I saw something like this where I don't know if you can see this it may be a little for uh, fuzzy um, so I apologize I'll ch yeah it's kind of fuzzy but I want you to look at these images these are f six different wallets Okay, uh, six different wallets. Let me pull it back up here in a minute. Six different wallets that I have on the screen. Okay, six different wallets with all the same timestamps. What do I mean by that? I mean a brand new wallet was created and then another one and then another one and then another one. Funds were added. Transfers were added. They then contributed to the same project. They claimed at the same time. They approved the same time and swapped at the same time. So while people who participate in pre-sales, they're showing up to a pre-sale with the idea that they're looking for certain types of gains. Just know that there's other people who are filling these pre-sells with just warm bodies. Like, look, here, here's one. Here's number two. Look at the timestamps. Okay? All of this is the same. These are, these are six different wallets. You can look at the, the from here. There's six different wallets. Okay? Timestamps, all the same. Means that they're executing, like... E if we all tried to do this together, we wouldn't be that, that, that precise. Okay? 
So like they're literally flipping through wallets, sending out these funds, contributing, changing wallet, contributing, changing wallet, contributing. Like the timestamp, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. Okay, why am I bringing this up? Why am I making a point about this? People participating in pre-sales think that it's an opportunity to get in before other people. They, they think that people who are contributing to these pre-sales are, are real. That these are 205 real people. When in all actuality, I, I think, just like we've seen botted Telegram groups, I'm not saying these wallets are botted. I'm simply saying that these are not 200 individual people. I believe that it could be some real people, yes. Some real people have bought into the hype. Some real people have bought into the idea that this fair launch was trending. Some people have bought into the hype of the Telegram group and, and all the nonsense that goes on in here. Some people, yes, have actually contributed. But I guarantee you that there's people in here with multiple wallets that are just a seat on the bus and a warm body is all they need. I guarantee that there's people in here contributing to these pre-sales with the sole purpose of selling as soon as possible to create a dump. So either their other wallets can buy at a lower price or the same wallet or you know, other friends or whatever that they're capitalizing on this. The Forex market is heavily manipulated, heavily manipulated by the big banks and things like that. And I see this pre-sale space starting to come into that mode of being heavily manipulated and controlled with smoke and mirrors and people. I'm not saying it's nefarious intent, but their goal is to make money as soon as possible. And if, if pre-sale participants are not aware that other people are playing a different game, it's very likely that their own goals will not be realized. I mean, especially, these projects are already kind of on the, um, I mean, if we were to look at like top tier, they would not be in that category. Every once in a while, we have the opportunity to see a top tier project like, uh, like Minima last week. And I forget the project we looked at, uh, what project did we look at? Uh, Factor, we looked at Factor earlier this week. Those are top tier projects. Top tier projects. But right now, there's a group of people who are in this space creating a false and fake sense of opportunity by basically manipulating price. When I say manipulate price, I mean, I mean one person, maybe with six wallets, contributing to the same pre-sale to make it look like there's more people there, more bodies. When I say manipulating price, I mean selling right away at launch. It makes no financial sense to do so. All they gotta do is wait a few seconds and price is gonna go up. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. When I say manipulating price, I mean them potentially buying the bottom before news comes out. Buying the bottom before you know tweets go out or calls go out. Them buying the bottom before different groups have access to the information. I mean, I think that just like people could sell in unison to create a dump, I think people could buy in unison to create momentum. I mean, there's there, pe people could when there's a when there's a low, <clears throat> people could buy enough to create momentum and hype because they know when they're buying, and all of a sudden you can get a project trending. You could get a project trending because enough volume has come through, which now gives you free advertising. You mix that with call groups. And, like, it's literally this snowball. But who started the snowball? Someone who heard about it from a call group, it could be right here. Okay? But who started the snowball? I mean, that's a difference. Here's a 7x from the bottom if they're controlling the price. And, like, it, it, just, be, just, just be aware and recognize the games that are being played, okay? Because I asked a question in, in Discord about, you know, sellers get wrecked. Who's actually getting wrecked in this game right now? And to sum everything up that I'm trying to say, it's one thing 
when there's a legit project that was down for a period of time, that was down 40%, 50%, 60%, that once they finally built out their tech, once they finally built out their utility, and all of a sudden the masses realized what was going on, they jumped on board. It's one thing to say sellers get wrecked at that point. It's different to say sellers get wrecked on games like this. And so when I opened up the session today, I literally said, it's one thing for people in Telegram to say sellers get wrecked, sellers get wrecked as a means of FOMO, as a means of false hype, as a means of, you know, obviously, obviously, if, if people stand to gain, okay, and this is the idea of, oh, sellers get wrecked, sellers get wrecked, so you have other people dumping, okay, Forcing you, okay. Well, maybe I shouldn't hold. Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I should get it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should hold. Maybe I should sell. Maybe I should swap. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I should stick my plan. I don't know what I should do. All these different things running through your mind. Just don't get played. Don't get manipulated, based off this idea of sellers get wrecked. Because right now, some people can 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 get get in a spot, and throw out that idea of oh sellers get wrecked. But yet there there is just it's just smoke and mirrors and people getting played. Okay, people getting people getting played. <clears throat> Louise says uh, makes Skylabs look very sweet. Absolutely, Meng says it's very difficult to see what is a manipulated dip and what is a crash in real time. Got to be really convinced by the project to dare to jump. In. A absolutely, one hundred percent. That's that's the thing that that blows my mind about some of these dips and some of these comebacks. It's like, based on what, <laughs> like this project for example. This is a significant dip. Like, who in their right mind would buy this? 63% down, a project that was created within a few hours, a telegram that's two days old. Like, there's zero substance here, and yet they're buying that bottom. Like, who does that? <laughs> like, I, I would be willing to say someone who knows what's up or someone who's controlling the price. I gotta stop talking about these topics. I sound like a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to throw that out there. Those wallets to me were were, were very revealing to see that um, you know every everything that we see in the space. Just realize that there's probably a bigger story. There's more information, and do your due diligence. Double check, triple check, check to see, verify, ask questions, but always, always, always remain skeptical. Because, like, even these numbers are not bogus. You know? Uh, we, like, we literally just saw, I saw, I showed you, I showed you six wallets that have timestamps that are within minutes of each other, meaning, very likely the same person. It's unlikely that all of us, okay, guys, let's all go create a new wallet. Let's all send BNB to it. Let's all contribute. Like, we're going to have just random stuff. But, like, a person going through and cycling through different wallets. Oh, let me do this one. Let me send this one. Let me do this one. Let me send this one. Let me do this one. Like, it could be really simple to do that. Okay, I mean, all you got to do is go up here to switch switch your wallet to a different wallet and contribute. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anyway, I just want to plant that seed and, uh, you know, let everybody be be aware, hyper aware, that um, that phrase, sellers get wrecked. You know, I think that there's a lot of sellers who are making money right now. I, I personally, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, I, I, but I don't think that this guy is losing money. I, I think that this is smoke and mirrors. I think that this, there's intentionality behind this, this dump, and um, I think it's designed to drive price down, so then other wallets, other opportunities are created to buy back up. Personal opinion, totally subjective. If you agree, great. If you disagree, even better. Uh, but just this just doesn't make sense. It uh, doesn't make any sense at all uh, to continue to contribute in pre-sales and sell instantly. And to sell instantly. I mean, and, and, I mean, we could take it a step further. I mean, is it that these projects are absolutely bogus and this person knows the project is absolutely bogus and is simply hoping that this happens more often than not? I have no idea. I don't know. It's just like, uh, how do you get in the head? Of, of someone like this. It just doesn't make any sense. So with that, like I said, uh, the idea, you know, sellers get wrecked. Yes, I think that is a thing. I think it is a thing. 
when sellers are impatient, when day traders find a project that's real and substantial and has real utility, like Factor, like Minima, like Vetter, like Skylabs, has, but they get out because they don't want to wait for the real opportunity to kick in. They wanted the quick pump so they can move on to the next quick pump so they get their fix for the day. Yeah, sellers get wrecked. But in this in this moment, in this market, I think that um, I, I think that there's there's some smoke and mirrors, there's some there's some nefarious nefarious things going on. And um, and I don't I don't necessarily think that uh, sellers are getting wrecked. I think that um, the people who believe that these projects are real and are holding are the ones getting wrecked. I, th I think that's that's the sad reality. The people who believe in in these in these projects, they somehow have ro enrolled into the vision, and and, and price continues to, to to go down and down and down. Those are the ones that are getting wrecked. You know that that's you know again my my opinion. You know take it take it for what it is. Uh, but that's you know that's what I see. That that's the biggest the biggest risk that I see is is those people are the ones getting wrecked. And, uh, and it, 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 it's, it's flopped around. It's flopped around. You know, being a seller, being a seller, is, is, it, it looked at as a, as, a, as a bad thing. And if, it, 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 and if having a seller mentality is a bad thing, can you be manipulated into holding? And I think some people can. You know, that, 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 that term JEET is thrown around, and I'm going to talk about this next week on another session. I looked up JEET to see what it meant, and there was like multiple definitions. And so, you know, the only reason I'm bringing it up is simply because there were definitions that actually didn't even make sense to what the crypto market says, and so we're going to talk about that next week. But like, even that is labeled as a negative thing. Oh, they, they're, they're a JEET, they sell right away. And I know that I'm not intending that for, for that to be negative or, or whatever. The only reason I'm saying the word is because I looked at multiple definitions today and I feel safe that I can say the word uh, without the meaning that I think the crypto space has put on it. But it's, it's pretty ironic. So we're going to talk about that next week. But even that, even that term, JEET, is used as a negative thing for people who sell right away. And I just, I, if, if, if someone... If someone has sold you the idea of a 2x, all right, let me let me put it like this. Let me let me go back over what's what's a good one. Here we go. If someone has sold you the idea of a 2x, I mean my goodness, for this for this project, let's just go 1.5x. <laughs> okay? This is your take this is your target area. This is what you're holding for. Okay? Okay? But you don't want to be categorized or classified as a seller because why sellers get wrecked. If you don't want to be a jeep so you're holding, you're holding, you're holding, you're holding. If people are banking on you holding, that means they can do whatever they want. They can get in lower, they can sell. They, they just got a 3x from the bottom here. They just got a 3x and you're still holding. Why? Because you're up here. <laughs> like, people are getting played. People are absolutely getting played with these terminologies and this idea of it's not good to sell because sellers get wrecked. It's not good to be... Dude, the people who are selling are, are creating this, this environment to get manipulated and run over. And uh, so again, the whole purpose of this was just to point this out and, and, you know, not financial advice, but get really crystal clear on what your objectives are and stick to it get really crystal crystal clear if, if you're if you're playing in these in these in these games right now just know that other games are going on um that uh that are that are counterproductive to what uh to what you're playing so with that i hope that uh i hope that was helpful and uh brought some uh, some insight into uh some of the stuff I, I i found i found both of these things really fascinating with uh this buying contributing and selling um pattern and i found this really really fascinating about um all these wallets brand new wallets brand new contributions um happening happening together on top of that i saw something else that was um that was pretty wild and that was uh you know, I never looked at a, at a, at a, at a bot, a sniper bot before. And then, then, you, then you take that into account. And uh, there was a project that launched at, let's just say, 9 o'clock. And 
at like nine o'clock in six seconds, there were like 10 contributions all at the same time. <laughs> and it's like, that's another thing that you're competing against, that you're playing against, that someone else is playing a different game that you might be playing. And so it's just, just be aware. Just be aware of, uh, of, of all the different um, shenanigans that, uh, that can be going on. All these are fair launches on Pink Cell. Yes. Yeah, Meng asks, are all those fair launches on Pink Cell? Yes. And um, these images right here are all con contributions into the same into the same fair launch. I believe it was um, the CI, the, uh, uh, what was it? It was the, yeah, it was this project, Central AI. Um, all of these contributions... All these wallets, contributions, and swaps were all for the same project, the uh, Central AI. But yeah, this, this right here, this group of all these are fair launches, all these are on Pink Cell. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the calendar. Hope I, get, hope I didn't, uh, hope I didn't, uh, Bore you. Hey, hey, Ricky, hope you're having a great day, brother. Hope I didn't bore you guys too much with my conspiracy theories. <laughs> uh. Alrighty. <clears throat> this is the Vetter Board. Hey, if you're brand new, if you're watching this right now, hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Every, uh, every session that we do, we... We spend a little bit of time talking about either, you know, mindset or some functionality behind uh, the, the, the DAP or pre-sales or certain trends that we're looking for. And today, I, you know, I just wanted to, you know, point out some things that I was noticing as I was digging through certain people's wallets on the blockchain. That's one of the cool things, though, about, about the blockchain. Everything is there. Um, and you can see it. And uh, it, does, it does help to create... Uh, you know, putting putting those pieces together. So if you are brand new to us, if you are brand new to us, this is our Vetter board. You can visit it at uh, vetterplatform.app. That's V-E-T-T-E-R-P-L-A-T-F-O-R-M.app. And there you can see uh, this dashboard. This is just a quick overview of all the different projects that we have here on, um, on the platform. <clears throat> I said that wrong. All the different um, areas all the different things that are built into the DAP. That's what I'm trying to say. Here's a snapshot of the calendar. Here's a handful of projects that have been recently added by, uh, by some of our top scouts. I mean, here's a leaderboard with uh, some of the payments we're at. And so I do want to say, those of you watching now, <clears throat> that uh, the gains here, uh, these gains are reserved for people who um, actually contributed in the pre-sale, meaning... You know, right here, uh, you know, if if uh, if Mang actually contributed in you know, this pre-sell with you know Santa, you know that's how you know that that would go there. Okay, if if Jamie P actually contributed in you know Galaxy Villains, he would put this game here. Um, you know, this is reserved for someone who actually contributed into the pre-sell and got that gain right here. The project gains. That's what we're going to see right here. This is where we record all the gains from the individual projects. That goes right here. So I just noticed the last couple of days, there's been, or last couple of weeks, um, you know, people have been putting the gains <clears throat> here. And the only the only problem with that is uh, sometimes these gains are going to be different. Okay, your personal gains are going to be different than what the all time high was, or you know what. Uh, you know, the vow was and, and things like that. And, and sometimes I've seen people, uh, you know, they don't know how to actually calculate the game properly and they put the wrong number here and then the wrong number is advertised on the platform. So, uh, yeah. So I would, like I said, just a reminder that, um, you know, if you participated in this project, you know, go ahead and put your gain here. If not, the gains will be recorded over here with all the projects that are launched and audited on the CrowdX calendar. So with that, let's go ahead and look at the calendar. 
anybody have a project they want to take a look at today? I, uh, I don't necessarily have one in mind, but we can sort through. I know we looked at uh, we looked at Factor earlier this week. We looked at uh, Poodles a couple weeks back. So that's off of the uh, the radar here. <clears throat> uh, you could register at, if you if you bought it at launch as well. That's that that is that is there as well. Yeah, so it's 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 for anyone who participated in the project. That's a great question, Ming. It's for anyone who participated in the project. Basically, what happened the other day, um, and this is this is a perfect reason why. So let me let me go back over here. So these these numbers you're going to know. Okay, these numbers you're going to know if you participated in BUSD Rewards, and you put in a hundred dollars and you pulled out. Five hundred dollars. That's a five x. You got five times your money. You know what that gain is, okay? The other day I had a scout ask me, "Hey, can you verify this gain? It looks like it did this. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the uh, on the gain section." And I'm like, "Well, did you get in the project? Because like you would know what the gain was if you got in the project. These are for personal gains." And what it ended up happening was that the wrong contract was used and it was a bogus contract and they're about to put 120x gain on the front page here and it was a project they didn't even get to themselves because if they knew that they would have known it was not 120x and you get what I'm saying. So this is reserved for people who actually got a gain in the project, whether it's pre-sell, whether you bought it at launch. If you got a gain, you record it here. And then uh, whatever the project actually gets for the Val and the all-time high, we're going to record that here on this section. <clears throat> All right, so we got uh, a few minutes left. So we're going to talk about um, Shib Shib Elon. <laughs> Sometimes I get to take time to sound these things out. All right, Shib Elon. It's been a while since you've looked at one of Dante's projects. Why am I bringing up Dante? Well, Dante is the king of the jungle. How is he the king of the jungle? His icon is a lion. Okay? His icon, icon is a lion. And uh, so I've nicknamed him the king of the jungle because he's a lion and he has the most hot streak rewards. Um, he's got a pretty refined process for finding great projects. Now, <clears throat> I will say this right here. Every meme coin is risky. Dante is exclusively all about those memes. He's about that life. <laughs> okay. And so... Uh, you know, we're going to see some stuff that is not going to be impressive. We're going to see some stuff that is a total turnoff, okay? But one of the things about a scout is about figuring out how you jive, where you fit, um, what works best for you, and what has where you find your success. And so while Gordon Gecko was on one end of the spectrum and, and Phyllis is on one end of the spectrum of <clears throat> utility projects, very consistent and quality over quantity. Dante's is on the other end of the spectrum with high risk meme plays. And guess what? All three of them are purple. It all works out. Okay, so you can always find your jam, whatever you're into. There's plenty of opportunity, plenty of room for that. But I did want to throw out that disclaimer that it's very likely, with this being a meme coin, that there's going to be a lot left to be desired. <laughs> When we look at this, uh, when we look at this project, why? Because this is a meme coin. All right. <clears throat> now, having said that, though, it can't be any worse than some of the AI projects we looked at that have been to throw them together in two days. All right. So I think it's fair. So this process is a you know process to sort for the best projects together as a community. That's what we do in the better ecosystem crowdsourcing, and this live is merely a, a step in that process, you know, where we are right now, this live session. And so I will say crypto is risky, no way, shape, or form. I'm going to tell you to invest. 
I don't know why anybody would want to invest in cryptocurrency. I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. I'm going to share my own thought process while looking at this project. And sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Like my my monologue earlier in, in the session about, you know, manipulating price. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? It's okay. It's all subjective. The purpose is simply to support you and what to look for as you're scouting your own projects. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Shib Elon. This is on the Ethereum network. Shib Elon. What's a decent introduction to the website? Shib Elon is the wealth, the present, the future. The wealth, the present, the future. Okay. Shib Elon is on a mission. Oh my goodness, this is a lot to read. <laughs> okay, so they have a story here. In the year 1955, a young Shib Elon was born into the far, far away planet called Neptune. Technology is too advanced on Neptune. But humans could not reach this far to see all the innovations that it has to bring. Therefore, Shibilan studied astronomy and saw that there was a very high population on Earth with very limited resources to reach advanced technology. On September 28, 1971, Shibilan sent his first electromagnetic signal to South Africa, which changed the world as we know it. The signal influenced an unborn child who will carry a prodigy that will revolutionize the monetary system. On June 28, 1971, that child was born, but he wasn't a normal child. He was born a genius, and his lovely mother named him Elon Musk. Shib Elon then took his time to develop intergalactic travel, and on August 18, 2008, he transformed a source code to planet Earth and deployed a monetary online currency which is referred to as Bitcoin, to see what the humans could do with it. He was thrilled when he found out that people started transacting with it as he intended. And on May 22nd, 2010, he saw a thread from a student in California who wanted to buy a pizza for 10,000 Bitcoins and decided to approve that transaction to help facilitate the adoption, which it did. He watched over Earth for years now and has almost completed his super rocket, which is set to take course to Earth on November 10th, 2021, to help create the gear. What? To, okay, anyway, sorry, I got distracted. To help to create <clears throat> the greatest wealth transfer in the history of the universe. As time draws near and travel gets boring alone, he will be entertaining himself on the journey by creating and developing a roadmap to his own token on the Binance smart chain assisted by his best friend Adam King, who will bring only the latest, never seen before technology, technological advances to the blockchain. <clears throat> Aside from the Solidity contract he created to be shared with humans, his roadmap involves advanced staking, super swaps, 3D NFTs, play to earn gaming, and many more that he will be sharing on his way to Earth. Expect him. He's coming. <laughs> He's the future. Hey, Nan, how's it going? All right. NFT announcement, January 16, 2023. First batch of NFT was released on January, February 12th. Okay. NFT V1. Kind of curious how, uh, how they did. That was a fun story. <laughs> I gotta give him credit though. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty, that's pretty creative. I would not expect that. I mean, that was more creative than uh, wait, is this already live? Oh, this is on Ethereum. Let me surely, surely, uh, This, they may be launching an Ethereum version of this. Let's go ahead and go to the day chart. Let's go back in time, see what we can find. This isn't too far ago. This is November. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's what they were saying about November. So let's go to Telegram because it looks like uh, maybe there's going to be like a... Uh, 
Yeah, so some influencers are calling it. Last BSC project was good, so I guess we're going to try it on the Ethereum network. Let's take a look. Tap to verify, start. Tap here. Done. Oh, my, 14,000 members. What? This group's not accessible. Oh, no. Can you guys get in there? I feel left out now all of a sudden. I wonder if I can start over. Tap to verify. Start. Verify. Tap here. Done. Oh, hey, I made it that time. Let me uh, prove that I'm human. Wow, they, uh, they like their security. I think that's three. Nice. Okay, I made it in here. Made it into Shib Elon. All right, so let's see if we can find any information about Ethereum. Because <clears throat> right now it's all about, or the, you know, showing the chart for uh, Binance. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here's the details right here. Pre-sale info, date is to be announced in February. We got a 60 hard cap, 60 Ethereum hard cap. Minimum 0 0.05, maximum 0.5. Uh, is that all we have? Is that all the details? Okay, so here's here's a better announcement. This is from MetaWells Gems. <clears throat> hey, MetaWells, very pleased to know that Shiv Elon is now coming to Ethereum. They did about a 35x for pre-sellers on BSC, and ATH was 14 million. <clears throat> Adam King, influencer and call channel owner of Investorgram, is a CEO and really well known in the space. Shiv Elon has. Already at Soldier Boy, The Game, Bow Wow, Eric Mina, Amber Rose, and many other influencers with them, including us. The B, Their BSC token is listed on LBank, Coinspit, LA Token, and Index, with more to come when they launch on Ethereum. Check out the white paper. Yeah, just check it out. <clears throat> oh, this is still the old white paper, though. Interesting. These are some of the same. I don't know if this is some of the same uh, same influencers that they use for the Binance version or or what. But yeah, this is all their original stuff. It looks like yeah, this is Binance stuff. I do appreciate the creativity that went into that. So I guess what this what this play looks like is uh, one of the things we talk about from a from a scouting perspective. If there's a team who's already created a project, okay, already had a successful launch, um, if they've done some great things, that's a really good indication that they could do it again. Um, they built out the network, um, they've built out their their user base, they've built out their community. Um, it's, uh, you know, if they've done it once, they could do it again. And so, you know, that's one of those really strong things with, with this project, uh, is meme coin. There's nothing to it. Um, all, although I will say that story is actually pretty engaging. I, I can appreciate time and energy put into, uh, creating, uh, creating that story. But I mean, that's, that's about it. I mean, someone could look at, uh, you know, look at the, uh, uh, look at the contract and, you know, see what's going on there. But like I said, the fact that, you know, they've been, they were doing their thing back in November, you know, that was shortly after Vetter had launched. 
Um, so with a you know community, pretty solid community, uh, lots of pin messages, a handful of partnerships, um, and the fact that they're moving to the Ethereum network. Um, you know, there's there's a couple projects that uh, you know Dante. Like I said, Dante is king of the jungle, and he's done a great job with um, the projects he's scouted. This is another project that recently launched on the Ethereum network brought, uh, from from him. Um, let's take a look real quick. It was, it was. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, this one didn't last very long. Oh, you know what's crazy? So, well, this one has some chart issues. I think. Um, let me let me duplicate this and go back. Maybe this is this will be a good learning learning experience as well. If if it happens, let's see if this happens. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. So, <clears throat> if you've ever wondered why, I love. Dex screener and but however Dex tools I try to get out of there as soon as possible. This is the reason why. Okay? This is the reason this is Dex tools. Here's the chart on Dex tools. This looks like a loss. Okay? We go to the daily, it looks like a bad a bad deal. We go to hour, it looks like a bad deal. We go to 30 minutes. This is what's going on. We go to five minutes. And we get a normal chart. <laughs> I absolutely despise Dex tools. This right here is a normal chart. This is what it looks like over on a Dex screener. But there's some weird thing that happens with Dex tools on like 75% or not 75%, 25% of the projects, maybe 30% of the projects on Dex tools. When you go to a higher time frame, it messes the chart up and like at first glance you look at this and you think oh my goodness what happened <laughs> you know? you're know, you like no you know but like when you go to the five minute chart it's like oh hey oh no big deal nothing to see here it's all good and then like it, it's just it's just so bizarre i under i don't understand because like literally i'm going through the same thing on deck screener in Dex Screener, we have two totally different outcomes, two totally different looking charts. You know, five minutes are identical. So anyway, that's one of the reasons I absolutely love Dex Screener. Uh, there's a lot of functionality behind that. But like this right here, it's just like, how can you, how can you be excited when you come to a chart and it looks like this? I mean, think about how many people have lost their minds <laughs> when they pull up a chart and it looks like this. So anyway, uh, Shib. Shipmania, Shipmania launched, uh, what was it, launched two days ago, and uh, Shipmania did pretty good, we got an all-time high of 10x, and uh, Val is going to be right around, uh, right in here somewhere, probably like 9x, oh, 8.6x, 8, 8 I mean, we can get it, let's get it, let's get it legit, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There we go. Yeah, so like right at a 9x, just shy of 9x. So, like I said, um, Dante's a Mundo. He's the king of the jungle. He has the most amount of hot streaks, and you know, he's got a really great process for finding his projects. So, want to give him a shout out, as always. Um, want to always highlight and showcase you know, our rock star scouts in the community. So with that, I hope today's session was helpful. <clears throat> we did talk a lot about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the smoke and mirrors aspect of, you know, people contributing in these pre-sales. Are they real? Are they not real? Um, uh, Femi asks, does PooCoin have the same? PooCoin does not have the same glitch. Um, PooCoin has its own issues. <laughs> uh, PooCoin... PooCoin does not have the, <clears throat> I don't know what we want to call this. We could call this a um, a candle glitch. We'll call this a candle glitch. Okay, over here in, in, in Dex Tools, we'll call it a candle glitch. PooCoin does not have a candle glitch. 
they have a different kind of glitch. And <clears throat> I don't know if I don't know if we can see it, but um, what PooCoin does sometimes, and I don't I don't like PooCoin at all either. I found Dex tools. I'm sorry. I found Dex screener to be the most consistent. If I ever run into any options where or op, uh, situations where Dex tools, Dex screener. Let me repeat. If I run into any obstacles where Dex screener does not give me what I need, I will then utilize PooCoin and um, and Dex tools as a cross reference. But Dex screener is always my go to. So PooCoin will do some weird stuff with the candles. <clears throat> And PooCoin will, let's just pretend, this This looks fine. I can't think of one off the top of my head. But sometimes we know right here, this is the listing price. How do we know this? How do we know it's a listing price? It's because that is the price where um, that first showed up on the chart. Right here. <clears throat> All right. And so that's how we can tell, you know, for these fair launches and things like that we can tell where they started. Well, sometimes what what messes up on PooCoin is sometimes there's a wick. And let me draw a trend line. So what happens with PooCoin sometimes, PooCoin will give us a wick. And so, <clears throat> so on Dex screener, we'll have a full body candle like this. Okay. So on Dex screener, we'll have a full body candle like this. And if we have a full body candle like this, where is the the listing price? Well, listing is going to be right here. Okay. <clears throat> but on PooCoin, sometimes they have this wick, and what that means is you can't. That this is not the listing price right here at the end of the wick. Why? <clears throat> because if it if it started down here. The way the way wicks are formed, it looks like this. Let me move this out of the way. The way wicks are formed, it's real simple. Price starts right here. And as volume comes in, price goes up. And whenever people start selling, it creates a wick. Okay, so right here, price went up, up to here. And then people started selling, so price came down and it creates a wick there. Well, what happens if you have a wick to the bottom? That means that if price started right here, okay, and went up, we now have a wick right here, okay? It was up here, now all of a sudden it's going down, okay? It's going down, price started right here, and then now it looks like this this candle is now red this is a down candle and you have a red wick okay if price started right here let me move this up it's hard to see because of the other stuff There we go. Now we got a clean, clean working space. All right. <clears throat> so price started right here. It was up and it was green. Okay. Let's just pretend that doesn't exist right now. <laughs> price started here. It's up. It's green. Okay. The moment it starts coming down, it's still green because it's a positive candle. But the moment it switches this way, okay, the candle becomes red. Okay, candle's red at this point. And it has a big wick at the top. And the candle's still going red because people are still selling. It's still in that first minute. Okay, but if price were to start to reverse, we're going to see a wick. 
Okay, so price came all the way down here and then started to reverse and go back up. Now we have a wick. If candle closes right here, a new candle starts right here. Okay, where this closes, this one opens. All right. So if it if it if it right away starts going down, you have a red candle. If right away it starts going up, you have a green candle. Okay, that's how that works. So what messes up with PooCoin sometimes is they'll have a wick, an arbitrary wick down here, which this this cannot be the listing price. That's not possible. It's physically not possible. Up here is the listing price based on the way the candles look. Why? Because it started right here. And maybe it just tanked right away. And this was a red wick at first. And then it came up. And then now the wick is red. But now we have a full body green candle. And it came back up and then went up here. And then it came down here. But it closed right here, opened up this new candle. It came down, closed right here, opened up this new candle. Went down a little bit, created a wick, went up. Closed up here, created this new candle. Went down. Okay. Went back up, created a wick. Closed, opened this candle. Then price went all the way up. Okay. And it closed right here and opened up this candle. Maybe it went up. Okay, maybe it went down. Likely what had probably happened was it came right here, it opened here, and it likely went well it doesn't it, we we don't know which direction it went, I don't think. So like it can go up and create a wick. It was green. Now it came back down, started to create a, a red body candle, came down, okay, creates this wick and goes all the way back up, and there's a small wick, it closes. And that's, that's how the candles work. So anyway, long story short, to wrap it up, PooCoin sometimes will give an arbitrary wick when on deck screener, the candle is going to be full body. The candle is going to look like this on deck screener. But on PooCoin, for whatever reason, you know, it shows up like that with a wick. And it just messes up with, you know, calculating the gains and stuff because you don't know what happened. And so I found deck screener to be the most consistent, like 90, 95% of the time, all projects on deck screener look pretty good. And every once in a while, that 5% of the time, I get to, I get to cross reference with, uh, with PooCoin and um, Dex tools to figure out which one is going to give me the best representation of, uh, of the chart. And I don't know what happens. I mean, I talked to Jeremy about it before and he just said, you know, there's a lot that goes into creating this point. And, um, PooCoin just does a really bad job. Dex Screener, my goodness, or Dex Tools, I have no idea what's going on with their stuff. The fact, the fact is, Dex Screener is still so big. It's so big, and the fact that like this hasn't been addressed is mind blowing. I mean, that just that just blows my mind every time I see it. Like that's actually what's happening here. You know, but then when we go on a higher time frame. <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest thing. <laughs> it's the craziest thing to see that. It just it just really irritates me. Anyway, so I hope that uh, hope that was helpful. There was a little impromptu, little impromptu class on uh, on candles, and uh, you know bodies and wicks and. Um, but that's why I always I always utilize deck screener. That's why I always talk about deck screener. It is just it's a really good asset, really good tool, um, among. The fact that the the the, uh, the data feed is much more accurate, among many other things like you know the um, the Telegram alerts and and uh, setting up watch lists where you can you know have a watch list over here and you know I'm sure I'm sure you know Dex Tools has things as well but you know Dex Screener actually works. <laughs> so with that, ho hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. You learned something new and. If anything, you know, you walk away with, you know, giving Deck Screener a try, trying it out, see how it fits for fits on, uh, fits for you. Uh, like I said, I really enjoy it, and um, yeah, I, I really really like the uh, just the uh, just the way it functions and how it consistently consistently functions well. So, with that, we're gonna call this session, gonna call it a day, gonna wrap it up. Hopefully, you learned something. Whether we're talking about. Um, you know, one user with multiple wallets in a pre-sell, whether we're talking about people intentionally selling to create sell pressure to maybe buy at a lower price or who knows what's going on there. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, there were some ideas that, uh, what, what, you know, ideas stuck out to you and something for you together. Uh, we did a quick look at uh, Shib Elon 
And, uh, you know, Dante Zamundo is a great scout to follow. Always worth, you know, checking the calendar out and seeing what he's got on his radar um, and, and seeing how it goes. It's always uh, always fun to do. And last but not least, we got to look at uh, a little bit of chart nuances with uh, Dex Screener, PooCoin, and Dex Tools and just talking about the pros and cons of each of them. And really, I didn't talk about the, uh, the pros of PooCoin. The one thing about PooCoin that's pretty cool, I will, I will give PooCoin this. The one thing that's a, about PooCoin that's pretty cool that I would like to see if Dex Screener did would be awesome. PooCoin, you can go ahead and put the contract in, and it's going to give you a chart. There's nothing going to be on the chart, but it's going to give you a chart. Dex Screener, you cannot do that. The project must launch in order for a chart to be there. So that's one of the things that PooCoin has going for it. The other thing is to be able to swap on PooCoin. Um, you know, whether you think that's high risk or not, that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about the functionality of it. Uh, it works really well. And what's really cool is it puts a little dot on your chart wherever you bought or sold. And I think that's pretty cool. I, I think that's cool. I think if uh, Dex Screener came out with something maybe they do i don't know i mean i don't know if they have something like that or not um but if they did uh that'd be pretty cool because uh, that is one of the things that i do like about PooCoin. but uh i use deck screener all the time so with that hope today's session was helpful hope you learned something and i would ask as soon as the session is wrapped up go ahead hit the refresh button and drop a comment on the comment section sharing what your biggest takeaway was from today's session Doing that actually allows more people to find the video. And if you found the video helpful, it's likely someone else will find the video helpful as well. Also, go ahead and drop a mention in, in Discord if there was something that you liked about today's video. That could also let some more people know about what we got going on here. We've been doing this for a year now. Have a, a lot of fun hosting these sessions, and I hope you guys get a lot of value out of that. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up like I always do. Um, my, like my mentor always said, life can be short. So for those that you care and love, let them know you care and love them. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Care about you guys. Thank you so much for being here, for being a part of the ecosystem, and for contributing and, uh, and making it what it is. So with that, I'll be back next Tuesday, same time, same place. But until then, I will see you in Discord. Bye for now.